Hello world, hello world. This is your main man, A.B. the Hero, and we are back for our second game here in Dallas, Texas at the Curtis Caldwell Center. And folks, the first game was amazing. Super intense basketball between the Seattle Ballers and the Atlanta Ballers. But tonight, the main event is here. The game that we all came to see, interstate rivalry between the Dallas Ballers and the Houston Ballers, the home team Dallas team is ready tonight to stand up and this crowd behind me is ready to cheer on their squad. I'm here with my main man, Brandon Williams, talking with Fresh. Brandon, can you feel the love tonight? Absolutely. As LeVar Ball just addresses this, this wonderful crowd of all these Texas natives, I can't wait to see the, 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 like you said, interstate rivalry, the Texas showdown is what I like to call it. Houston Ballers are trying to come off their, uh, their last loss against Chicago high-flying team you know I've spoken highly about them Dallas trying to get their first win it's gonna go down tonight AB it's gonna go down tonight folks if you're tuning in now live you showed up just in time because this Dallas squad has a ton of guys from the Dallas area a few folks from outside of Dallas but they're not from Dallas but they can D-town boogie you're gonna be <laughs> excited and you're gonna love what you see tonight folks I'm, I'm, I'm pumped because I know that Houston team, even though they're in the state, in the city of Dallas, they've got some guys from this area as well. So they're going to show up and put on for their home, their home home crowd. And then also, they don't want to lose. This is bragging rights on the line, folks. Interstate rivalry, Longhorn Showdown, Junior Basketball Association, history in the making. This is our inaugural season, folks. And I'm excited. I keep saying every time I say inaugural season, it gives me hype because I know what we're doing. I understand how this is changing lives, folks. And tonight, these fans are going to feel it. Absolutely. And like you said, I may not be from Dallas, but I can D-Town Boogie. I know you might mess around and hit a Dougie later on. <laughs> hey. But um, what I want to see tonight is I want to see some passion from this Dallas team. You know, they've, they've had a bit of a rough season so far with, you know, some players being moved around or, or whatever the case may be. And the, the the lack of chemistry was starting to, 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 to get there in the last game. So I want to see them put it all together and, and put on a show tonight against this Houston team. Definitely. You have this Dallas team who's looking for a win. They want to win bad. The first couple of games that they've had, they really haven't been in it. Like you said, they're trying to figure out their chemistry. And you got this Houston team who had a tough loss in Chicago against the Chicago Ballers. Kizo Brown of the Chicago Ballers put on a show for the ages. That Chicago arena was a definitely home field advantage for that Chicago squad, and they're dealing with that again tonight here in Dallas. But I feel like they're going to be up to the task, up to the challenge, and this Houston team doesn't want to lose two games in a row. Folks, we got a ball game on our hands. It's going to go down tonight, A.B. <laughs> Let's check out the warm-ups where you can see the fire in these players' eyes. Hello world, hello world. We are coming to you today live from the Curtis Caldwell Center here in Dallas, Texas. Garland, Texas to be exact. North Texas between the, with a, a interstate rivalry <laughs> on our hands, folks. This is going to be exciting just because the passion that these players are going to bring today, fighting for their state, bragging rights, that alone is going to have the excitement in this building going through the roof. But we've got two excellent squads amongst us right now. Both of them looking for a W, coming off tough losses from both teams. I'm ready to see a battle of the ages. 
And I think we will see that tonight. There's a lot of passion, a lot of intensity on both both sides. You know, there's a lot of players from Dallas who are actually on the Houston team who, whether this may not be their home building right now, they feel like they're at home because they're, they're from here. Same thing for the Dallas squad. A lot of players from Texas as well, but it's their home team. So there's going to be a lot of intense passion field back back to back uh, action going on. I can't wait to see what's going to happen. 100% here, man. We're bringing in these Houston ballers right now. This team from Houston is, like you said, is filled with a, a bunch of guys from this area, from Texas. But we got a couple guys on that team who are from Dallas, actually. So this means something to them as well. You got Curtis Hollis here from Arlington, Texas, right around the corner from this arena. So he feels like he's at home. So he's playing for two cities right now, his own team in Dallas. That's right. And then his the team that's on his jersey right now, Houston. Curtis Hollis, a guy for this team who is does it all. We've seen in the last game versus Chicago, he got into some foul trouble, fouled out a little early, and that cost his Houston team. He's looking to play a little bit smarter, stick around for this whole game, and continue to be that backbone for this Houston squad. Not only that, but Jordan Myers, he is also from this area as well. Went to North Crowley High School, a huge powerhouse in this area. He's looking to put on for his own city as well. Get back into the win column for this Houston team. I'm also excited to see the, the matchup of the, of the bigs. I mean, we have Nate Morris for the, Dallas, um, for the Dallas Ballers. He's looking to try to establish himself on the offensive glass and not on the defensive end. But not just that, but he also needs to try to get going offensively and see if this Dallas team can come together and try to look for him early as well. Definitely. Dallas, this Dallas squad, I'm, I'm really waiting to see what their chemistry looks like. They're a team that continues to try to gel with each other, and they're starting to get it, and we really want to see that here. But right now, you see Coach Ashton Bennings also here from the Dallas area, was actually the reason why some of these Dallas players play for the Houston team. They made the Dallas squad, but they found out he was coaching over there. He's coached EYBL and uh, all over Texas basketball, and they wanted to be a part of that, and then to have that chemistry with the coach, which we've seen. But we right now, Cam Massey coming out also from this area as well. Cam Massey looking to put on for the, the city. As they call his name, we hear the crowd erupt behind us. Khalil Walker coming out for this Dallas team who erupted in his last game. Really put the whole league on notice versus the da versus the Seattle team that we've seen earlier who can play some start stingy defense of their own. Khalil Walker representing Omaha, Nebraska, and you see he and Carlin McSpadden, they're both high school teammates. Both of them trying to take some of that same chemistry they had in high school to win a state championship, put it on in this Dallas Ballers team. Khalil Walker, a guy who can score, dropped 39 points in his last game. I'm sure he is going to be looking to get that going again this evening. Got Solomon Zaze touching the court here. Louis Silva. When I talk about the the player on that team who's not from Dallas, but can D-Town Boogie, oh I'm talking God. about Louis Silva. You're going to see it tonight. I can guarantee it. He's going to be the sixth man for this Dallas team, and he's going to be the guy who provides that energy, that spark of life. If you see them start to slow it down a little bit, if you see them need a change of pace, insert Louis Silva, and that's what you're going to get. See big Nate Morris. Checking in right here with the Dallas squad as well. He's a guy who has played very high level of basketball. And you'll be able to see that in his game. A very, very refined game that he, he comes with. And you're going to see a big battle of the bigs. Not only is this guard play going to be very intense tonight, if this Dallas team can get Nate Morris involved in the offense, it's going to be special. Now, I'm curious to see how, for those of y'all who do not know, uh, Dallas has, has a re-addition to their team, uh, and I'll talk a little bit more at the National Anthem. that our flag 
wonderful, wonderful voice right there. I love the way he was hitting those runs. He had more runs than that last game that we watched between the Atlanta Ballers and the Seattle Ballers that ended with the Atlanta Ballers winning 146 to 135 over the Seattle Ballers with a shooting expose. Oh, that's, that's an understatement. A clinic being put on by that Atlanta Ballers team. Nigel Chaney, 44 points, shooting 11 for 19 from behind the arc. Folks, that's 57%. It's pretty, pretty crazy, actually. That was amazing. That was a, that was, I hate to say it, but that was Steph Curry-esque. It kind of was. And before the, the, the anthem went, uh, was, was being played. I wanted to make note of, of, an, of a new addition or re-addition, I should say, for, for this Dallas Ballers team. He's not going to be playing tonight, but Nyon Wick is now back on this Dallas Ballers team. He was a player that, you know, had there were some things going on, and now he's back with this team. And if you would have asked me before the season started, I would have told you that I would have probably had this Dallas team probably in my top four. Um, they, they had a ton of chemistry and they were just playing so well together they loved each other and he was a huge reason why and if you hear or if you ever hear the term ah wah wah that is a huge testament that is what they're talking about that is Nyan Weck that is his calling card his credo let's see if that makes any difference to this team even though he's not playing tonight he, he did tell me before this game you're going to see him be the biggest cheerleader sitting on the bench even though he's not playing tonight so be on the lookout for that all right here at the jump ball we've got nick lovelace a high flyer versus nate morris nate morris with the size advantage wins the tip cameron massey local superstar looking to get this dallas team going see some nice ball movement to start off trey peterson Another guy from this area. Now, I don't mind that, that set right there, A.B., mainly because there was at least four or five passes um, before Cameron Massey took that shot. So, you know, with 11, 12 seconds left on the clock, if they can continue to do that, I like their chances better than, than, than some of the possessions we've seen from them in previous games. Definitely we have a quick foul over here on, the, on this end from the Dallas Ballers. Looks like we have some international people watching from Brazil. We have someone from Perth, Australia in the building, or in the chat, rather. Curtis Hollis, Arlington, Texas. Nice back door. Shannon Handy with a strong finish. I would tell you one thing about these Texas teams. They love to show you that the weight room works. It does work, A.B. And so does the protein. Okay. <laughs> Smothering defense, uh-oh. Shannon Handy, he's a high flyer. Some good interference right there by Cameron Massey. Makes Shannon Handy hesitate just a little bit, misses that easy layup, but the Houston I think he really wanted to do like a windmill or something. If, you, <laughs> if he gets in the open court, uh, guys, you will see some high flying action for sure. That is one of the calling cards from this Houston team, which is ironic because they are Houston is the, the birthplace of NASA. And this team has definitely adopted that credo that Houston, there may be a problem, but when this team takes off, it's always a good problem. It is. And we saw a nice poster dunk from Nick Lovelace last game that almost knocked me off my chair for sure. Harlan McSpadden with the great head fake to Trey Peterson out of Dallas, Texas. Great pass by Nate Morris. Showing that he can facilitate as well as a big man. Tra traveling right there. I see right now, I'm, I'm not minding the fact that this Dallas team just isn't executing in terms of making their shots, but they're playing so much better in these first few possessions. They just need to knock some of these shots down. Folks, also let us know once again where you're tuning in from and let us know if you tuned in for that first game and you're back with us for the second one. We'll be sure to make sure we try to shot you out. Curtis Hollis, the lifeblood of this Houston team. Arlington, Texas. Curtis told me before the game he's looking to put on a show. He's got a lot of people coming tonight. You can hear him uh, sitting behind me right now. This uh, arena is starting to fill in with a lot of these local Dallas residents. I would tell you, 
it, it's got to be tough. You have Kevin Walker says they're back uh, from the first game. They were here in the party earlier. There's, there's definitely Walker, a, a huge inner struggle in this building right now. We've got a lot of folks showing up for from the Dallas area to root for their the players who play for the Houston team. Just really reminds me of, you ever watch Free Willy? <laughs> Ooh, Trey Peterson. Trey Peterson, Dallas, Texas native. There's this moment in Free Willy where the, the little boy is trying to free Willy, but he's standing over that barge and Willy jumps over him. <laughs> And little boy is so excited because Willie is free for the first time, but he knows that he may never see Willie again. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of inner tension that I feel like we got in this room right now. <laughs> you got folks who want to see this Houston team show out because they got some local kids, but Houston don't want to lose to Dallas. No. Khalil Walker, he can get it going. Jordan Myers oh. rolls the oop to Nick Lovelace. Comes down hard, but he bounces back up. Nick Lovelace is a guy who will dunk on you. I will say that over and over again. It's only nine minutes and 21 seconds left. We got plenty of time to see some of the craziest dunks you may see all night. Nick Lovelace from Shreveport, Louisiana. He's got some folks in the building. Came over to see him tonight as well. Cameron Massey showing off the handles. Being Very tight defense by, by Calvin, Calvin Williams. Williams. I'm really liking these extra passes from this Dallas team. I haven't seen this. Set off Great from. defense, though, by this Houston team. Shot clock violation, folks. As we say all the time, we're playing by NBA regulation rules. So 24 second shot clock, 12 minute quarter, 48 minutes of total regulation, and a ton of adjustments that these players need to make in order to really get comfortable playing this with these rules. Well, that's that's been the adjustment so far. You know, it's you know 48 minutes, you know, 94 foot uh, court. Look out, folks. Trey Peterson. You know, I said look out because this is another guy who, you know, just like this Houston team, he can pretty much, his head can touch the rim. So if he gets one going, look out. One of the things I'm seeing right now from this Dallas squad is, is great defensive communication. Well, the chemistry is much better tonight, A.B., and that's really what I was looking for. I see them pointing each other in the right direction. Some verbalization is coming. I feel like this Dallas squad is definitely trying to arrive this evening. Verbalizations, I like that. Thank you. Carla McSpadden, he's got a nice little head nice there. Nice pass. Beautiful find with Trey Peterson. The chemistry, folks, is looking good. I haven't seen this much ball movement from this team. Probably in all the, the games combined, combined that they've played so far. What's the, what's the name of that TV show? What's the name of the TV show with, with the chemistry professor? The chemistry professor? Yes. How long ago was Heisenberg. He? His name is Heisenberg. I have no idea. That's the type of chemistry I'm seeing from this Dallas squad right now. Folks, if you're tuning in live, let me know. Chemistry professor named Heisenberg. What's the name of that show? We have another story from AB, I'm sure, coming. Jonathan Dobbins, the, these announcers are lit. Cam Massey from downtown. And we always lit, AB. It's Liddy again, it's Liddy again. 
Jordan Myers driving. This Dallas team is playing some solid defense now. I'm loving, what, I'm loving the play so far. It's really seeing them play as a unit. It's really not the shot they probably wanted there. We've seen them start to swing that ball around and, and share it. I'm sure they wanted to get into a set right there. Calvin Williams passes to Curtis Hollis with a step back. Cameron Massey with the break. One of the things to look for from this Houston squad is them operating under the mantra, everyone eats. This is a team who is looking to get everybody involved. They want to have multiple 10, 15, 20 point scores for this team. I think someone says it's Breaking Bad, is that correct? Yes, Breaking Bad. That is correct, you win. A thumbs up. <laughs> This Dallas team has chemistry like they're trying to break bad. Cameron Massey getting this Dallas team into some offense. Trey Peterson shakes himself. Cameron Massey with the heads up. Nice pass to Nate Morris. The great chemistry from this Dallas team continues. Calvin Williams slowing it down. Looking to get this Houston team into a set. You can look for Calvin Williams to facilitate this thing. Four seconds left on the shot clock. Calvin Williams is going to have to get this shot up. Finds Curtis Hollis with a nice pass, but he's unable to finish right there at the rim. This Dallas team is looking good with a slight lead. With five minutes and 58 seconds left in this ball game, the Dallas Ballers lead 11 to 10 over the Houston Ballers. If you're from Dallas or the Dallas area, let us know. Let us know exactly where you're from as well. Oh, Curtis, Curtis Hollis. Hollis with the flush. Curtis Hollis decides to cock it back with the Ooh. one hand. His signature two-handed dunk is all reserved for right now. Carlin McSpadden for some nice words for Curtis Hollis. Carlin McSpadden looking to get it going. He's one guy from this Dallas team who's yet to really arrive yet, but tonight may be the night. Omaha, Nebraska native. I like this here. Trey Peterson takes that shot, hits the ground. Carla McSpadden runs across the court to give him a high five. That's the chemistry that we want to see from this Dallas team. Trey Peterson from the Dallas area. It's a lot of personality with, him, with, the, with Trey. You know, off the court, you know, he has a huge smile. On the court, is very fierce. Loves to get the ball in the open court. Put it down huge when he gets the chance. Spoke to Trey Peterson before the game action. Man, Trey, why? You're a talented dude. You can hoop. Tell me why did you choose the JBA? He said, man, this was just the opportunity for me. He said, I had to get out of the neighborhood. I'm not trying to go back trying to get to that next level, which is the NBA for him. And this was the best route. Trey Peterson, dreaming big. You hear that from a lot of these players, actually. Yes, working very hard to get there as well. Cam Massey with the quick hands, forces a turnover there. Now this, this, this crowd in here is starting to remind me, uh, similar to the last game, uh, or the last city, rather, in Chicago. They're really you know, behind their, their hometown team. It's, you can kind of feel the energy in here, and it's really nice. Duval back in the live stream. Jordan Meyer says, get that shot out of here. 
Carlin McSpadden. I think he sent that back to H-Town, actually. Chicago, Illinois in the house. Trying to get that ball down to Nate Morris. In their first game, he was very dominant down there. Let's check out this block from Jordan Meyer. Oh. With the stare down right afterwards. Curtis Howe is stripped by Trey Peterson. Trey Peterson unable to finish. I will tell you why. There's no easy buckets in the Junior Basketball Association. Nick Lovelace unable to catch that pass. I, and I will tell you why. Because he was dunking that ball yes. before he caught it. As number zero, Luis Silfa from the Bronx. Miggy the Don checking in for the Dallas Ballers. And he's that. another guy, if he gets on the open court, A.B., some fireworks can go off. Watch the pace right now. Pick up for this Dallas team with Louis Silva touching the court. Oh, Trey Peterson with the saucy move. Nate Morris with the tip in. Trey Peterson is feeling it right now. He's upset that he missed that shot. But the sauce was definitely dripping. Jordan Myers looking to work. It's a little bit too much driven right there. Shannon Handy dribbles into some stingy Dallas defense. Dallas defense forces a turnover. Carla McSpadden getting ready to go to work. He's got that look in his eye, folks. Fresh fish on the line. Ain't nothing like it. Shannon Handy out on the break with the nice laying on the left side. Shannon Handy just has that body that you just, you covered as a, as a, as a coach. And he's long, 6'6", six, six, just rangy, you know, this that type of player that you really look for. Miscommunication there from this Dallas team. Nice hands by Colin McSpadden. Colin McSpadden on the other end. Luis Selfa has got to finish that beautiful pass from Colin McSpadden. This Dallas team needs to get the ball in the hands of Khalil Walker. Let him get his offense going. Had a huge game last game. Leo Walker in his last game was 39 points, 17 rebounds. Double, double. They want that from him this evening. Colin McSpadden tries to pull up in the face of big Jeremiah Allen from College Station, Texas. Very proud of his, uh, where he comes from as well. Looks like they call illegal defense there. McSpadden at the line looking to extend this lead for the Dallas Ballers with two minutes and 45 seconds left in this first quarter. This may be the, the largest and the longest time that Dallas has held a lead um, so far in this, uh, this young season. As we see Martavius, Tay Tay, Smothers coming in from Alexandria, Louisiana. Also moved to this Dallas area as well. He's a player that can really fill it up from outside very quickly given the opportunity. Tay Tay Smothers looking to have an amazing game this evening. He's got some folks in the building. Call him expand. Off the Tay Tay assist. It's like, I think he's taking a bow and arrow out for a second at AB. Carla McSpadden looking to get it going. Omaha, Nebraska's finest. Jordan Myers with the threads the needle oh. to pass to Curtis Hollis. Stingy Dallas defense. A foul called on Curtis. On Louis Silva. 
Louis Silva, Miggy the Dawn from Bronx, New York. Carla McSpadden and Curtis Hollis have been John back and forth <laughs> this first quarter. So we have a one-on-one -on -one battle going on. One. I'm going to tell you why you got that battle going on. It's when you put some dogs <laughs> on the court together, they going to scrap. That's right. Is that your LeVar Ball voice again? That's my LeVar Ball. It was better that time, I think. That was a little bit better. I'll give you that. Carla McSpadden showing off the ball handling. Sean Washington with some tight defense. He's calling for someone to either give him a screen or come get the ball. Khalil Walker looking to get it going, unable to finish. Martavia Smothers picks up that foul. Probably not a, not a bad foul, actually, other than the fact that it sends him to the line. But I think Myers probably would have got that to Curtis Hollis for a nice flush. Jordan Myers. Going to close this deficit right now. Houston down 16 to the Dallas 20. I will say that you can tell that this rivalry, in-state rivalry, means something. Most folks would have suspected that this Houston team, who has proven to be one of the better teams in the league, would be off to the races right now versus a Dallas squad who struggled to really find chemistry. Well, that's the thing, and I don't mean to cut you off, A.B., but that's probably the, the real issue is just that it's not a lack of talent. It's just a matter of, you know, playing together, trusting each other, and having that chemistry like you just stated. Jordan Myers knocks down both of them. Coming to you live today from Dallas, Texas, Curtis Caldwell Center. Quick hands from Louis Silfo, pulls up from the outside, rattles in and out. Louis Silfo showing you that energy that we talked about. Houston leading right now on the board, 16 to 12. Nice no-look pass from Jordan Myers. 24 second clock, shot clock violation. Curtis Hollis needs to settle down just a little bit. I know his, his family's in town, he wants to put on the show, but you know I think he's, he's kind of in his head right now. He really needed to go ahead and put that shot up, but he passed it out to Washington on that play. This Houston team with 12 turnovers to this Dallas team's four. Definitely uncharacteristic from this Houston team, who's usually vibing on a high level. Got a shot clock malfunction here. Fifty-two seconds left in this first quarter. Folks, let us know right now. Make your predictions. Who do you think is going to come away with the W here in Dallas, Texas? Curtis Caldwell Center. Garland, who gets, Texas. Who, who gets the W, ladies and gentlemen? And not just that, who are you rooting for? Nice step back from Jordan Myers. Nice defensive possession there. Carla McSpadden had Luis Silva out on the break. Didn't see him there. And we saw that a lot from Khalil Walker on the last game. Just a lot of attacking. You know, he was really a beast, you know, penetrating the lane like that. And we saw just on this last play how he's able to get to the line. Definitely. We've seen him get it going by attacking, knocking down some free throws. Then there was a point in that game where he just couldn't miss from anywhere on the court. The outside shot started dropping as well. 
Khalil Walker looking to just see that ball go through the net. Hopefully to light a match. Sometimes that's all it takes. Oh, checking in right now for these Houston ballers, we have Jordale Ross. New addition to the squad. Jordale from Houston, Texas. Was recently teammates, signed. Yeah, recently signed. Was teammates with Chicago baller Tone Singleton. Naptown native. You know, that's, that play right there is a, is a known play from this Houston Ballers team. Uh, as you see where Deshaun Washington dribbles at that weak side or that strong side corner. And you see the Curtis Hollis with the back door for the layup. All of it's batted. Oh. I've seen in our <laughs> Curtis Hollis's last game, knocked one in from half court. Got all type of range. But here after one, we have the Dallas Ballers with the lead, 21 to the Houston Ballers, 19. This Dallas team is looking good. I'm liking a lot what I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing from them so far. Much better than the first uh, games that they played. I mean, we, and we've talked about a lot more chemistry, a lot more togetherness, a lot more sharing of the ball. Things I have not seen from them so far to start this season. We're seeing them really keep the turnovers to a minimum. Coming to you live today, folks. This is our second game of the evening. Earlier today, we watched two Titans in this league. The Seattle Ballers take on the Atlanta Ballers. Atlanta walking away with the W, continuing their undefeated streak. 146 to 135 over the Seattle Ballers. It is a tough loss for that Seattle team who's seen Jarrell Springer, one of the guys who has become a marquee player in this league go down early with the injury came back a little bit late but that little patch with him on the bench proved to be too much for that Seattle team to surmount with some of the other guys who they had missing out of that rotation but like I said earlier we had a shooting clinic from Nigel Cheney who shot 40 scored 44 points 57 percent shooting from behind the arc not far behind him, Jordan Ray, 43 points, shooting 40% from behind the arc, knocking down nine three-pointers of his own. Really put on an offensive clinic. That, that Atlanta team is going to be someone to pick uh, to deal with. Look at this sign. Oh, <laughs> Solomon <laughs> Zaze. Solomon Zaze section in the, in, the fan, in the stands. With a big head, Solomon Zaze. From the Dallas area. From the Dallas area. Solomon Zaze, a sharp shooter for this team. He's Family is from Afghanistan. Afghanistan, yes. Family is from Afghanistan. He told us that he's never lived over there. He wants to go someday, but he's definitely proud of his culture. Absolutely. Solomon Zaze is a guy who you don't want to leave open. Trey Peterson back in the game. Sean Washington going to work on the baseline. That's going to be tough sledding down there. He's not going to get much in that play. There's supposed to be a reset in the shot clock there, and I think... Uh, I think it I think was. I think, they got, uh, I think they reset it just a tad bit too late. late. And I think the Houston Ballers thought that they were running out of time there. Cameron Massey... The slow, methodical dribble. Going to do work on Sean Washington. Solomon Zaze is probably going to pull this up, folks. Picks up the dribble, but doesn't shoot it. Another shot clock violation. So if, you, if you're just tuning in with this, guys, go ahead and... Let us know where you're tuning in from. We'll do our best to shout you out live over the live stream. Rep your city. Khalil Walker. On the break, unable to finish, but does draw a foul. 
Somebody says, hey, yo, what's good, A.B.? Can't find the, the name, but someone's shouting you out, A.B. 52 Block is back in the building. Miggy the Don, representing DX. Somebody asks, what is the JBA? The JBA is the Junior Basketball Association. It's a historic inaugural season is underway. You're tuned in. If you just stumbled upon this today, you have stumbled upon history, and this may just be your lucky day. After you finish watching this live stream, go play the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you share that with AB as well. Definitely. Yeah, if Maryland you go, in the building. You go play the lottery because I told you to do it. Uh, you owe me money. Well, you didn't specify how much. Jackson, Mississippi in the building. Calvin Williams dribbling past Camp Massey. Cameron Gordon says, A.B., hey, what you eating tonight? Tonight we eating winner's barbecue. Jeremiah Allen. Nice. Eating that barbecue from the Plano location. Had me one of them MVP potatoes. Solomon Zaze showing the range. Oh, almost with the putback from Nate Morris there. Trey Peterson playing some tight defense, but draw, draws a foul. Someone says New Jersey is in this thing, A.B. Nobody ever talks to you. You know what's that? I mean, they, they always talk to you. I'm the one that's asking where you're from, but hey, it's okay. It's all right. St. Louis in the building. Robin J, shout out. For sure, man. Everybody wanted to talk to me, man, because I, I I'm a good conversationalist. Oh, and I'm not. Apparently. And I'm for the people. A.B., love the kids. <laughs> Curtis Hollis. I love everybody. Too. How about that? Jeremiah Allen. Uh-oh, this Houston team is starting to have some inner dissension. Seeing them, that's not what the play. I mean, Curtis House was coming around, but there was nothing there for that that bounce pass from Jeremiah Allen. So, Coach Rick Nelson telling me about it as well on the other end. Cameron Massey from Duncanville, Texas. Trey Peterson from Dallas. Khalil oh, Walker. Khalil Walker. Knocking it down from Omaha, the three. Nebraska's finest. We got North Carolina in the house. Fresh, what's going on? Shout North, out to North Carolina. North Carolina, come on and raise up. Raise up. Take your shirt off. Hey, 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 hey. hey. We are around your head hey, like hey, a hey, helicopter. Hey, hey. That's, That's, before, sure. That's before fresh time. I was actually living in North Carolina when that came out. Thank you very much. I thought you were from Alabama. Never mind. Represent Alabama. Mobile, PA. Wiz Town, stand up. Columbia, Jordale. South Carolina in the building. Jordell Ross inbounds to Curtis Hollis. Thank you for the love, Jordan. Oh, I'm sorry, Jonathan Dobbins. Curtis Hollis with a little whip around. Beautiful feed from. Jeremiah Allen. Jordell Ross with his first points in the JBA. Jordell Ross getting in on this Houston chemistry. I'm liking his intensity out here. All right, see that play right there, that's kind of what this Dallas team has been doing. I hope they don't revert back to that. There was no ball movement whatsoever. Too quick of a shot there by Cam Massey. Curtis Hollis looking to get the offense set for this Houston team. Gets the bucket. Nice floater. In the lane. We have someone from Finland, Nicholas from Finland. Jonathan Brown says, Fresh, what you know about this song? You don't know that. What's the weather like in Finland right now, Nicholas? Let us know.
Someone says the commentator stage bringing up songs from the early 90s and 2000s, or the late 90s and 2000s. Well, I mean, that's part of my era. I, I could start talking about that yellow beezy. <laughs> Dallas, Texas. You just learned that song yesterday. What are you talking about? But I know it. <laughs> Look at Curtis Hollis with seven points. Trey Peterson with seven points as well to lead both of their squads. Tight ball game so far. Dallas leading 26 to Houston 25. I think it's going to go all the way down to the wire. Miguel Harrison from Shawtown, North Carolina. Never heard of that town. Cameron Massey. Looking to get into this Dallas offense. Let's see some of that more, that breaking bad chemistry that we seen earlier. Nate Morris, there it is. From the mid post with the nice pull up shot there. Cameron Massey with the driving kick. Someone asked what our Instagram tags were. You can find AB at AB the hero. Brandon Williams find me at talking with fresh. Got Nate Morris out in the. Nice hustle, Nate there. Morris showing the athleticism, trying to get out on the break. CJ Howard says Indiana in the house. In Dynano, what's up? That's where AB is out. 812 317. Port Arthur, Texas. That's the one of my favorite groups back in the day. UGK, Port Arthur. Calvin Williams bringing it up. For this Houston team, Cameron Massey playing some tight defense. He got away with the foul there. Solomon Zaze with the steal. Calvin drove right into the 6'10", Nate Morris. Realized it was a bad idea. Turned around, Solomon Zaze right there. Rick Nelson making some changes here. He's got three players ready to come in. Jordan Myers, Nick Lovelace, and Shannon Handy. Coach Rick Nelson, a Texas basketball coaching legend. Legend, H-Town area. Has one of the coolest demeanors when really talking about this team. Like I told you, he told me the mantra is everybody eats. And I asked him, what do you need to do to win this ball game? He says to me, we need to do what we do better than they do what they do, and we'll walk away with a W. Coach Rick Nelson couldn't have said it better myself. Absolutely. With seven minutes and 30 seconds left in the second quarter, we have this Dallas team leading 28 to 25 over the Houston Ballers. Our friend from Nova Scotia is back in the building. Rob Barton. Shane and Handy, we see some ball movement from this Houston Ballers team. Jordell Ross showing us that he can shoot that thing too. He says, let's go as he puts those trays back in the holster. Team defense from this Houston squad. Now it's possible that you know, Coach Ray Johnson may want to get a timeout here soon and just let his players know, like, look, this one-on-one -on -one is not going to be the style that's going to win us this game. They've Got up on this Houston team by playing a lot of team basketball. In the past few few possessions, I'm starting to see some one-on-ones here. So let's see if they can get back to sharing the basketball a little bit more. Coach Ray Johnson from San Diego, California. California Hall of Fame coach. Cameron Massey got some contact right there on that three. Well, no call. There again, it was... 20-something seconds left on the shot clock, and he runs down and shoots a three. You don't need that shot right there. Great one-handed rebound by Nicholas Lovelace, a guy who we know can jump out the gym, showing that he'll do it for the boards as well. called Jeremiah Allen Big Mo. Is that is that his nickname? Let us know. Sean Washington. 
Houston team look like they're getting into a play. Nick Lovelace with a board. Sean Washington with another three on this end, unable to hit for the second time in a row on the same possession. Coach Rick Nelson not liking that, those shots by Deshaun Washington, one of the younger players in this league. Still trying to get his shot going. He's pretty ice cold last game so far. Tough sledding as well. Jordan Myers checks in. Curtis Hollis looking to initiate the offense, calling for a screen. Lil Walker with some tight defense, tries to poke it out, creates a little contact. You have an illegal defense on Carlin McSpadden. Curtis Hollis is going to shoot the free throw here. For those asking again for myself and AB's inst uh, Instagram, my art, Social medias are the same for all platforms. Talking with Fresh, yours truly, AB the Hero, YouTube, no spaces, Instagram, Twitter, all the same. No spaces, make sure. No spaces, just money. <laughs> Jordan Myers looking to go to work. Travel call, turnover. <laughs> Dallas team has let this Houston team creep back in here. Tie ball game with five minutes and 54 seconds left in the second quarter. Stick around for halftime. Got another halftime interview coming for you. With Houston Ballers, Curtis Hollis, and the Dallas Ballers, Trey Peterson. Let us know what you want us to ask them. Let us know if you if they know you, we may mention your name, see if see if y'all really connected. <laughs> Showing that he can D-town boogie. He threw that down all the way from Omaha, Nebraska. Omaha, Nebraska. Khalil Walker showing us that that corn in Nebraska is not like the corn anywhere else. It's got some bounce in it. Curtis Hollis driving on this end. Can they get a bucket of his own? Curtis Hollis at the free throw line. Eight points for Curtis Hollis right now in this first half. He's a guy who, who they want to have fill up the bucket for them. He's, gonna, he's a guy who is typically a leading scorer for this Houston team, but he's someone who can get it going at any moment. So eight points now could turn into 50 for Curtis Hollis. Some great movement by this Dallas offense. Carlin McSpadden driving. Nice defense there by Jordan Myers. Jordan Myers with the steal and is, has the athleticism to kick the ball out in front to Shannon Handy, who draws a foul. Right now we have Jordan Ray. He is live with us, well, in the comment section, that is. So those of y'all who have any questions for Jordan Hollywood Ray of the Atlanta Ballers, Ask your questions, he'll try to answer some for you tonight. Shannon Handy off the side of the rim misses his first free throw attempt. <laughs> Luis Silva checks out. Martavius Smothers checks in. 
Martavius Mothers for Alexandria, Louisiana. He's got some family in the building this evening. Shout out to Tay Tay. Martavius Mothers looks to get the offense going. Nice drive and finished by Carlin McSpadden. Nice offensive set from that Dallas squad. Nice drive and dish from Martavius Mothers. Nick Lovelace takes the outside shot. Nice cleanup there by Shannon Handy. Scott Morris tries to sink a jump hook. Jordan Myers dribbling that ball low to the ground underneath the six foot ten Scott no Morris. Got three minutes and 47 seconds left in this second quarter. We have a tie ball game, folks. Houston 33, Dallas 33. Have a timeout on these Houston ballers. And folks, we have a ball game. We told you that this in-state rivalry would be full of passion and aggression, and neither one of these teams would want to go easy. Well, Dallas is looking to get their first win, and Houston does not want to go down one to two. So definitely going to be tough sledding for both of these teams if they really want to win this game. Close, tight scores, 33-33. It's going down, baby. Also, again, we're looking at Curtis Hollis and Trey Peterson at the half. If you have questions that you want to have asked to these two gentlemen, please let us know. You see both teams struggling from behind the arc. Houston one for eight from three-point land. This Dallas team three for 13, shooting 23% and 12% respectively. These teams need to pick it up from outside. See the edge and rebounds, big edge going to Houston. 32 rebounds to 16. Someone is really trying to get Indiana in the, in the JBA. You think that's possible, Aiden? I feel like Indiana definitely could have a team, but I watched. Tone Singleton. Oh, there's our first <laughs> one from Nick Lovelace. Nick Lovelace throwing it down. Zero regard for the rim. Zero regard for that rim. And also zero regard for your grandmama's baked good. <laughs> Nick Lovelace shaking that rim, trying to get on the Richter scale. Calvin Williams with a nice hesitation dribble. Freezes Cameron Massey. Dallas help defense able to stop him. Trey Peterson will fly. Trey and Peterson run. with the jelly. Trey Peterson is one of those guys who keeps a bottle of jelly in his pocket and a bottle of jam. <laughs> and he could switch it up on you. Nothing wrong with that, Andy. That time he decided to go with the jelly. Trey Peterson from Dallas, Texas. Trey Peterson at the free throw line, looking to give this Dallas team a lead. Sinks it, completes the three-point play. The Dallas team fired up right now. It's right tough defense there. Just the push off. Cam Massey. Defensive player of the year for his Tay Tay. Pulls up from three. Unable to hit. Definitely has some folks in the stands though when he took that shot. We heard Dallas erupt. 
If he gets going, that's going to be a, another huge piece for this Dallas offense. Curtis Hollis. Hollis. Curtis Hollis starting to cook. Oh, Nick Love plays. Nick Love plays. Throwing With the rocket boosters on. Nick Lovelace turned into Wreck-It Ralph or Fix-It Felix with the hammer. Slam. It's a good time out there by Ray Johnson. Get these players settled down. No need for Carla McSpadden to drive in there like that. You hear some people are here in the, in, the, in the crowd asking for the Dallas Ballers to settle down and run the offense. That's exactly what they need to do. We've seen from a lot of these teams when they get into the offense, when we see that ball movement, when we see the driving kick, some screens, they get a better shot. And these guys can hoop. When they get open, they get a good shot. You get a good pass. High percentage knocking down those shots. Here we have the two leading scores for both teams. Curtis Hollis with 11, Trey Peterson with 10. Tonight, we're coming to you live. Dallas, Texas, the Curtis Caldwell Center. Folks, the energy is in the building. Dallas, Texas has showed up for this second game. Got a pretty good crowd on hand for this interstate matchup. Got the big baller in the building. Big, big baller, baller in brand building. in the building, folks. Get your merch. Get your merch. Shout out, Demo. Not only when you touch down at one of these Junior Basketball Association games, do you get to see some high-quality basketball from some from, from, up, from upcoming talent. You also get an opportunity to get your merch. Get your merch. <laughs> Cam Massey getting it started with, for this Dallas Baller squad. Jordell Ross with the rebound, kicks it up to Sean Washington. Curtis Hollis kicks it back around. Sean Washington pulls up the oh! three. Splash. Sean Washington, cash money from deep. Looks like they wanted Martavius Smothers to get a three right there in the corner, but Cam Massey didn't pass it. Decided to pull up on his own. Dallas team talking to each other, trying to get on the same page. Martavius Mothers from Louisiana. Really repping Dallas hard. Kind of reminds me of those Trill NT. You know who Trill NT is? No. It's a lot of guys. A few folks, a little Webby from Louisiana, but really go hard in Dallas. Feel like that's what you see from Martavius Mothers, a Louisiana kid who still reps the D-Town. Well, he went to high school out here. Um, don't want to quote the wrong neighborhood, but I believe he's, he's from the uh, Anthony Lancaster. But very proud of where he's from, Alexandria, Louisiana, coming over to Dallas to try to get a better start. Folks, one of the cool things also, you can get your merch, and also you can win some merch here at the Junior Basketball Association. We've got T-shirt giveaways. Half court shot to win a pair of ZO2s. The entertainment value in the building is A1. Check out the schedule, jbaleague.com. Figure out when we're in a city near you and show up and show out, just like Curtis Hollins tried to do with that signature two handed flush. Unable to finish it, but draws contact. We'll be going to the free throw line, looking to extend these Houston ballers' lead. Well, started to really gel and pile it on right now. Hey, 
All right, we've got one minute and 22 seconds left in this first half. Folks, let us know who do you think is going to win. Leave in the comment section now. Make your predictions. Don't switch it up. We're going to hold you accountable. Houston able to retain possession. The referee says the Dallas ball is tipped it out of bounds. The crowd did not agree with that play. But I think he got it right. Dallas needs to stop right here just so they can keep this lead or keep, uh, keep it within arm's length in the second half. Curtis Hollis with a nice drive. Khalil Walker with some help defense is able to knock it out of his hand. Good hands right there. The leg game called on Houston. Cameron Massey. Duncanville, Texas. Nate Morris. Nate Morris. That's the Dallas team we talked about. Once they get into some sets, start running some offense, they start to get buckets. Carlin McSpadden says, raise the roof. Nate Morris is one of those players on this Dallas squad who anybody who's watched that team play wants to see him be more involved in that offense. You've seen some, some, some moments from him where he's looked unstoppable. Well, the good thing about that last possession was, you know, I've been talking about how fast this, this, this Dallas team has been playing with just you know, a lot of quick shots, a lot of one-on-one -on -one possessions, just, which was one of the lead there. But they got a nice high pick and roll. Found Nate Morris. Excellent, beautiful roll to the basket. Two-handed flush. Trey Peterson at the free throw line looking to close this gap. Dallas ball is 41. Houston ball is 44. 30 seconds left in this half. Folks, stay tuned. We have some halftime interviews coming up. We'll be here all night, folks. 27 Sorry. seconds left. Houston leading 44, 42. So we've got a ball game on our hands, folks. Interstate robbery. Oh. <laughs> Jeremiah Allen able to finish with a little luck on his side. You know what they say. When preparation meets opportunity, you get luck. And that's what we've just seen. Six seconds left on the clock. Cameron Massey looking to get a buzzer beater. Jeremiah Allen with some stingy defense. But also is called for a foul. 1.4 seconds on the clock. Cameron Massey goes to the free throw line. Looking to shrink up this lead before we go into halftime. All right, we've got Trey Peterson for Dallas. Ready to be interviewed here at halftime. Folks, stick around. Let us know what your questions are. Got a very tight ball game. As we end this half, Trey Peterson knocks down the first one. Looking to cut this lead to two. Misses that one. All right, folks, that is it. Stick around for these halftime interviews. After the one half of basketball, we have the Houston Ballers leading 46 to 43 over the Dallas Ballers. Folks, we have a ball game. We build this one as an interstate rivalry that was going to be played with a lot of passion and intensity. And it has met that billing. We have Trey Peterson being interviewed first, followed by Shannon Handy. 
take a look at these stats. Right now, what I feel like is going to be a, a critical component for this Dallas team to really stick in this game is for them to continue to shoot free throws at a very high clip. 71% as a team. But what has to change for this Houston squad is these rebounds. Let's go to the interview with Trey Peterson and Brandon Williams. All right, I'm here with Dallas Ballers, Demaria Trey Peterson. Trey, why don't you tell me, it seems as though the chemistry is a little bit better this game. What do you think about that? We've been bonded with each other outside the court, trying to get to know each other better. So we've been trying to work on that a lot. Also, talk about a little bit about this rivalry. You can feel the tension in this building. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's been a little talk between us and Houston throughout training camp and all that. So it's just a lot of intensity. That's all. It's just friendly talk. That's all it is. Now, what does this Dallas team have to do to get back in, this, in the game in the second half? We got to keep the energy going. We can't let up on them. That's the only thing. We got to keep our minds together as well. Good luck in the second half. Let's take, take a look at some of these highlights from Trey Peterson. We're here with the Houston Ballers, Shannon Handy. Shannon, why don't you tell me about how this rivalry is going with this Dallas Ballers team? Man, it's a good, it's a good rivalry right now. Right now, we just need to stay focused, stay disciplined, and just you know keep executing. And we, I believe, we'll come out with the dub easily. But right now, they're giving us a fight, and we really just need to keep working hard. So you said they're giving you guys a fight. So what, do you, what does this team have to do to make sure you maintain the lead in the second half? Well, we just got to keep running our plays and, you know, make sure on defense we're not lacking, you know. I mean, right now it's just everything just going forward toward the plan, so we just got to keep the lead and stay focused. Now, you're a player that likes to get off the ground and you can put down some really nice dunks. What do you have to do individually to make sure that you lead this team to a victory? Just got to knock down my free throws, first of all, because I'm missing them. And right now I just got to play strong and be aggressive, make sure I get all the rebounds and just attack. Good luck in the second half. Let's take a look at some highlights from Shannon Handy. Just witnessed a great half of basketball. Two teams, interstate rivalry, Dallas versus Houston. What more could you ask for? I can't, I'm at a loss for words, mainly just because, you know, this Dallas team, you know, some people may have expected them to kind of lay down, but they came out guns a-blazing in, in the first half, so I don't really know what to expect in the second half, A.B. I, I would tell you that it, it definitely has something to do with this crowd here. Dallas definitely showed up for this city tonight, and you can hear it. Every time that Dallas team gets the ball, starts to drive to the basket, this crowd begins to erupt, and I'm sure that's feeding the passion that we're seeing from this Dallas team tonight. Well, we saw what happened in the last city with, with Chicago. We saw they went down to the wire. This might be uh, the second night for, for Houston where it might be an overtime or a buzzer beater finish, and that's what we've been waiting for. Folks, definitely stay around for the second half of basketball and check out some highlights from the first half.
Hello, hello, we are back here coming to you live. The inaugural season of the Junior Basketball Association and our fifth stop here in Dallas, Texas. And you're witnessing a interstate rivalry. The Houston Ballers leading 46 to 43 over the hometown Dallas Ballers. Folks, this has been a ball game. Dallas team had to leave for a little bit. Houston came back, seen a couple different lead changes. And one of the key components to this game isn't happening on the court it's in the building the folks from dallas have showed up and decided to show out for their team tonight and you can see it and the amount of bounce that this dallas team is playing with and the chemistry that they brought today is like no other and that's the thing that i've been pretty much clamoring for for the past uh, games for this dallas team is that there's been a lot of individual play not a lot of sharing of the basketball saw a ton of that in the first half so we'll see how they come out in the second half to see if they can close this game out with the victory. First half leaders for both teams. Curtis Hollis with 13. Shannon Handy with 10. Trey Peterson with 12 for the Dallas squad. Nate Morris with eight. 
Shannon Handy closing in on the double double 10.7 boards. Sean Washington with a nice hesitation. Drives in and splashes. Nice and mid range jumper. Somebody says they missed the, the movie reference, AD. You missed it. It was an epic one. More to come. And I, I talked about the, the individual pl uh, play, and Trey Peterson just dribbled into to a double team there and got the turnover. The, Dallas is not going to win doing or uh, playing, playing that way. They're just not capable of doing that. Calvin Williams pulls up. Splash from the outside. This Houston team is getting tons and tons of second chance opportunities. As you saw the graphic previously with the rebounding is, is pretty much one-sided right now. Cam Macy just drives to the hoop. Coach Ray Johnson did not like that last possession from Dallas. Trey Peterson hoping to give him something else. Of course, there's a turnover. Really want to see this Dallas team slow it down, get back into that offense. One of the things that I like from this Dallas team is when they have Carlin McSpadden kind of running the pace. Feel like he slows it down just a little bit more than Cam Macy is doing, and they, they're able to just get into an offense. Coach Johnson might need a timeout right here. And that's your timeout. A lot of rush shots from that Dallas baller squad to start off this third quarter. They really need to settle down. And Coach Rick Nelson is liking what he's seeing as far as their team being able to grab boards to create new possessions. Well, Rick Nelson, he's been in this game for, for a long time. And he, like you said, he's a legendary coach in the Houston area. You know, so he's going to make sure that this team is ready to close this game out in the second half. Folks, our next game is coming up June 29th in New York. New Chicago York, Ballers New taking York. on the Philly Ballers. Los Angeles versus New York. Another coastal matchup. These two teams played already with L.A. smashing the New York squad. But New York, who was able to get their first victory, has breathed new life into that team. And they're hoping to take a W behind their hometown crowd versus the L.A. Ballers. I'm excited to touch down in New York myself. You in New York, what's up? Let us know if you're pulling up. Shannon Handy, you got Nick Lovelace is going to oh. fly. It must be the shoes. It must be the all blue zo 2s Or it could just be genetics. Might be a little bit of both. Trey Peterson in the corner, unable to hit the rim with that shot. This Houston team has the capability of putting up points and bunches. And they can do it in a very entertaining fashion, as we just saw. One of the things that we've seen is once Nick Lovelace throws one down, there's always another one close behind it. It's not going to be the last, I can guarantee that. Deshaun Washington, uh, Washington is starting to feel it now, ladies and gentlemen. It seems like every time I say someone's getting cold, it's like they can hear me and they just like to shut me up. Deshaun Washington from San Bernardino, California. Nate Morris probably needs to just take that down and put it up quickly. That's Carla McSpadden, nice feed. Cleo Walker was able to draw the foul on Nick Lovelace. Folks, we're back for the second half. Let us know where you're tuning in from. I will shout you out. If you're in the Dallas area, you still got time. Get to the building, Curtis Caldwell Center.
Khalil Walker with eight points, one rebound, zero assists for this Dallas Baller squad. There was a little bit of a, <laughs> of a dust up almost that, that just happened underneath the basket with uh, Nick Lovelace and Khalil Walker. Kind of got in each other's faces there. That was, uh, could have been our, our first potential altercation in this league. And we definitely don't want to see that. No, we don't, but I do like to see the intensity for sure. It's like we got a push off. Sean Washington. Carla McSpadden running the point for this Dallas Ballers team. Looking to get him into some offense. Some chemistry between him and Khalil Walker. Let's see it. Curtis Hollis. Quick hands, but it's called for the foul. It was a legal uh, defense, actually. Makes sense there. I, I thought it was clean. It was. So good help there by Curtis Hollis. Just had a backside defender standing in the paint just a little too long. Can't do that in the pro level away from your man. Eau Claire, Wisconsin. I knew somebody from Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Shout out. Jack, I'm not going to uh, try or attempt to pronounce your last name. Shout out Cedarburg, Wisconsin. I can put you in the mansion <laughs> somewhere in West Kansas. Nate Morris looking to get it going. Khalil Walker with the heads up. Beautiful pass to Trey Peterson. That was much better ball movement there. And that's what this Dallas team did to go up in the first half. So they need to get back to doing that in order. They want to get back into this game. I'm sure they want to get back into this game. All right, Jonathan Barrow is not going to stop until we shout out the N.O. New Orleans in the house. Representing that 504. It's Nolans. Not New Orleans, it's Nolans. I didn't say New Orleans, I said New Orleans. That's what I said. Is no. What I'm telling you is Nolans. No, they don't say Nolans down there. They not, say Nolans. Well, they think some people oh, say oh, Nolans. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Depends on who you ask. But it's definitely not New Orleans. It's Nolans. All one word. Calvin Williams looking to get this Houston offense going. Jordell Ross, who has been a lovely addition to this Houston squad, fit right in. Luis Silva is coming to the ball game. Khalil Walker. The nice finish. I thought he was going to try to jump over Calvin Williams there. Decided to put the jam away and just go with the jelly. Sometimes toast tastes better when you put a little butter on it. <laughs> Calvin Williams. Crossover pulls up from three. Johnny Jordan on Ross. the spot, Jordan Ross. Jordan Ross has shown that he has a very high basketball IQ with his ability to just seamless, seamlessly fit into this Houston offense and defense, playing a prominent role in his debut game here in the Junior Basketball Association, where every game is history. That's right, AD. If, you, if you're just tuning in, if you're enjoying what you're seeing and hearing, please make sure you tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to join the party. Watch this wonderful game. Louis Silva checking in from Bronx, New York, 52 block, according to the comment section. Miggy the Don. Somebody just said they need Miggy on the court as well, he checked in. Well, he is definitely a player that can get it going really quickly. And Miggy we trust, I see. Manny Cordero is a big Miggy fan. Miggy has a lot of fans. I, I've noticed that. <laughs> Nick Lovelace checking out. For Jeremiah Allen, College Station's own. I feel like there's a solid chance for the JVA to touch down in Indiana. I'm a fan. I'd love to go stay at my own bed for one night. 
Curtis Hollis in the tag mode. Curtis Hollis has sneaky athleticism. Well, look how long he is. You know, just seems like one step, he's probably going to go from the three-point line almost all the way to the basket. But then once he springs, he's just a, a quick jumper. Willie Tanga, shout out. I'm really waiting for one of these players tonight to, to pull the chicken out of the oven. So let me see it well done. It hasn't happened yet? Hasn't happened yet. Seen a couple hams with the pineapples on the outside. <laughs> But I haven't seen a chicken come out the other. You know, even in my meat eating days, I wasn't a pineapple with the ham on out of the ham with the pineapple on the outside type of person. I just wasn't. All right, our next game coming up June 29th in New York City. Chicago versus Philadelphia. Los Angeles Bowlers taking on the New York Bowlers. We will be in New York City. <laughs> I like that reference there. Thank you. Carla McSpadden with the drive. Unable to finish on the reverse layup. But Nate Morris with the putback. Houston hustling, able to cause a jump ball. All right now, as we like to do, we have Nate Morris. Pierce Pedro says pineapple goes on pizza, A.B. Do you agree with that? Versus Jordell Ross for this jump ball. Who do you think is going to win it? Let us know right now in the comments section. And pineapple does not go on pizza. I do not agree with that. <laughs> you know, I tried that the other day. I'm, I mean, it was, it was okay, but you know, I can do without it. Houston able to come away with that jump ball. Then has an unforced error. Shannon Handy tosses it right through the outstretched arms of Jordell Ross. Looks like Dallas is trying to set up something here. And we still for driving. Oh. <laughs> Came in there a little out of control, but is able to get contact. Will go to this free throw line. Looking to cut into this Houston lead. Houston leading right now with six minutes and 35 seconds on the clock. 60 to the Dallas Ballers, 50. This game was pretty close. With Dallas only down by two at halftime, but they've been unable to really get it going as they did early on in this game. A lot of people don't agree with you, A.B., on the pineapple and pizza. Well, I guess let's say us, because I don't really agree with them either, honestly. If you put pineapple on pizza, what else goes on it? Tomato sauce? That's like saying you could eat pineapple and spaghetti. It's not a real thing. <laughs> Luis Silva misses both of the free throws. That could have put them within single digits. Calvin Williams looking to get it going. Drives in the lane. Luis Silva with some strong defense there. Khalil Walker with a nice pass to Luis Silva. We caught an illegal screen on Nate Morris. Fifth foul on Nate Morris. Alvin Williams slowing it down. Houston team about to run plate three, which means Curtis Hollis <laughs> get us a bucket, and he does. Put just on the line for Curtis Hollis. Carla McSpadden slowing it down for this Dallas team decides to pull up. Answers get right back. His foot not on the line, so that's a three-point bucket, folks. Now, Carlin McSpadden was the one who got this team ignited in the first half. Let's see if he gets it going in the second half right now. Five minutes and 40 seconds left in the third quarter. Paul Traveler looked like that ball was tipped to me by Nate Morris. 
Curtis Hollis does not like that call. Check it out here on replay. Curtis Hollis drives. Uh, I think that was the correct call, A.B. Looked like the correct call. They get it done with the tip away. Unable to finish. Nice Euro step. But unable to finish right in front of the basket. You put pineapples in your pizza rolls. No. I don't know what to say about you. <laughs> Nate Morris rattles one in and out. Houston team slowing it down, looking to run it, get into a set here. Calvin Williams, one-on-one, gets the screen. Curtis Hollis, Khalil Walker playing some tight defense. Calvin Williams, Curtis Hollis. Curtis Hollis with the quick hands. Calvin, Calvin Williams. Williams with the buzzer beater. Give him two points on that one. Carla McSpadden looking to get the offense rolling. Passes Khalil Walker who pulls a quick three-pointer. Unable to connect. Calvin Williams driving the ball up, eyes up the court. Curtis Hollis calling for space. Pulls up from outside. Three to the dome piece. Cash shows money ice in Curtis his Hollis. veins. Trey Peterson calling for the ball in the corner. Wide open for a second. Trey Peterson. These Dallas fans are getting a little restless right now. Calvin's going to get an eight-second call here. Yep. And he got it. Calvin taking a little too much time, slowing it down a little too much. Calvin Williams is, as you can see, one of the youngest players on the on the, on the court right now. As so you look at this. Calvin Williams right here in the, in the corner. But mm -hmm. 10 seconds in high school, only eight here in the JBA. And Jeremiah Allen with the block and the tip out to Curtis Hollis. Dallas team playing some stingy defense down there, not letting Curtis Hollis get an easy bucket. Do you want to know why? Because there's no easy buckets in the Junior Basketball Association. I agree. Are we still for looking to get the offense started, calling for a screen from Nate Morris. Doesn't take it. Trey Peterson finds Carla McSpadden, who splashes one home. Count him. Carla McSpadden is, is really... He's keeping him in the game, maybe. Keeping him in the game. He's messing with that oven right now. Feels like he's about to pull the chicken out the oven. Martavius Smothers getting set to check back into the game. Carlin McSpadden finds Trey Peterson for three. Trey Peterson from downtown. You see the big smile on the big baller's face after that play. Carlin McSpadden really doing a great job of running this Dallas offense. Two minutes and 20 seconds left in this third quarter. Houston 69, Dallas 59. Folks, we have a ball game on our hands. Dallas team looking to make a comeback. Martavius Smothers getting ready to check in for this Dallas team. Oh, and Khalil one. Walker. Khalil Walker. The big bucket through contact. Khalil Walker continues to show us that the weight room works. It does work, A.B. The protein powder works. <laughs> Early morning workouts, they work. And genetics don't hurt. 
Omaha, Nebraska stand up. Two minutes and four seconds left. Khalil Walker trying to knock this down to seven. Nick Lovelace checks in for these Houston ballers. Khalil Walker needs these clutch free throws here. Sinks it. Able to complete the three-point play. Deshaun Washington with a beautiful runner. Deshaun Washington is playing a lot more aggressive uh, this game. He settled for a lot of outside shots last game, but he's been attacking and just picking his spots a lot better. You, Pierce Pedro, if you show up at one of these Junior Basketball Association games, you get to see LeVar, who's been at every game and always addresses the audience. Every game. Every game takes pictures with the fans. Come meet LeVar. Get come to the merch. Get yeah, I was gonna merch. Say, come, get, come, come to the BBB pop-up shop. JBALeague.com. Figure out when we're going to be in your area. Show up and show out. Represent your home team. A lot of people in the comments are liking Khalil Walker right now. Khalil Walker has serious game. As we talked about earlier, we watched him come out in their last game where he dropped 39 points. Carla McSpadden running this Dallas offense. And one. <laughs> Harlan McSpadden, Omaha, Nebraska, native as well. This Carlin. Dallas crowd is loving what they're seeing right now. Harlan McSpadden, Nebraska native, corn fed. These Nebraska guys are showing us that they love contact. Well, we talked about how you know they were you know teammates in high school, state champions in high school, and. Letting that chemistry rub off to the rest of this team. And tonight is a much better showing all the way around from both of them, even this Dallas Ballers team. Calvin Williams kicks it out to Sean Washington. Calvin Williams pulls up from three. Unable to hit, but we see this Dallas team showing up a little bit on the deep, on the rebounds right now. Octavius Mothers. I think he may have gotten hit on that play. So a little tip there. Davia Smothers playing some tight defense on Calvin Williams. This Dallas team, they just cannot seem to get the defensive rebounds to end these, these possessions. Too many second opportunities for this Houston team. And you cannot give that to this team. Six seconds on the shot clock. Curtis Hollis is attacking the basket tonight with reckless abandon for human life. He, like he tried to, to cock that one back. I don't think he tried. I think he actually did. He just got fouled. As you can see, though, on this Dallas end, Carlin McSmadden at this point guard, running the show for them, slows down our offense just enough and you're starting to see them really look like a well-oiled machine sometimes when he's running the offense, once he gets him going. I agree, A.B. Curtis Hollis at the free throw line. Sinks him. You see the poise that Curtis Hollis has and that leadership, just an extremely talented basketball player. He's going to be the catalyst that drives this Houston team home for a victory. Carla McSpadden finds... Octavius Smothers shot that rattle in and out. Beautiful pass. It was. You know what I always say, great passers make great shooters. And I always say I agree, coming from a shooter myself. Octavius Smothers going to the free throw line, looking to cut into this Houston lead and get his first points of the evening. He's cash with the first one. Now, Martavius, we said it in the first half, and he's a player that if he gets it going, he can really fill it up from outside. 
knocks them both down. Shooting three free throws here. Tay Tay represent Alexandria, Louisiana. Tay Tay is a name that you actually gave him, and he loves that name. Well, if someone asked me what's my gimmick, you know, my gimmick is I, I come up with a lot of these nicknames. Come up with these names. I like it. Calvin Williams slowing the pace down for this Houston team. Looking to watch them get into an offense. As we know, this is a team where the mantra is everyone eats. They've got to play for everybody. Good defensive stop there by Dallas. They go into the fourth quarter down. Houston leading 73 to 67. 12 minutes left, A.B. Yes, we're at a ball game. So we got a ball game, folks. Coming to you live from Dallas, Texas, Garland, Texas, to be exact, the Curtis Caldwell Center. We have an interstate rivalry matchup. Houston Ballers taking on the Dallas Ballers. Houston leading right now, 60, 73 to 67. And look at the, the rebounds. This is, this here, if Houston is able to pull out a victory, that will be the reason why. 61 rebounds this evening. The ability to extend the possession, the ability to end a possession from the Dallas team is really proven to be a key for this Houston team. That's a 27 rebound margin. That is absolutely insane. And it's amazing that this Dallas team is still in the game this way, and it, and it, and it speaks to the, the play of Carlin McSpadden. And this Dallas team, if they continue to lock down on defense and, and, and they continue to share the ball on offense, they have, there's plenty of time for them to come back and win this game. There's plenty of time. We've got 12 minutes left in this ball game. We've got a ton of folks watching with us online. Folks, let us know where you're from, and I will be happy to let you know, Brandon, that the folks, the viewers at home have accepted you as the nickname man. Oh. So, so you get that role. Well, I, I feel I feel privileged, privileged now. You get to I think come I've up, come up with some pretty decent ones I feel, so far. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with your ability to come up with nicknames and your point, point, you being appointed with that position. Well, I mean, I'm, a, I'm an educator as well. You have a master's in education, so I also teach as well. And you know, you have a classroom full of students. You know, sometimes you have to come up with certain names for them. Through three quarters, we have Curtis Hollis leading the Houston Ballers with 20 points. Calvin Williams right behind him with 12. For the Dallas Ballers, we have Carla McSpadden leading his team with seven, 17 points. Trey Peterson with 16. One of the things that we've seen from this Dallas team is every game they've had a new person lead them in scoring. This is a team who is really trying to find their identity here. And as you can see, if they can get it going, they've got a couple guys who can fill up the bucket, play some solid offense. Well, that was a nice set coming out of the timeout. It was, looks like a horn set. You got Trey Peterson open, just couldn't cash it in. Calvin Williams with a pass to Sean Washington. Back to Calvin Williams. Sean Washington with Cameron Massey. Guarding one-on-one. -on -one. They want to get the ball to Curtis Hollis as the shot clock winds down. Unable to hit the rim there. Calvin Williams <laughs> causing a turnover. Cameron Massey out in transition. Nice oh, pass. beautiful pass around the back. And I talked about the energy and the personality of Trey Peterson. As you see him on the court with a nice yell after that nice Finish and pass from Cameron Cam Massey. Massey goes behind the back, splits two defenders, and a beautiful left hand drop off to Trey Peterson. Cameron Massey is in the kitchen, folks, <laughs> and he's a five star chef. Got a two on one. Khalil Walker, Solomon Zaze. Solomon Zaze making an extra pass to Khalil Walker. Trey Peterson likes it. But that was a good job getting out on the break there. Folks, we have a two-point ball game. This is an interstate matchup, a rivalry. Listen like to these fans other. in here, A.B. The fans are starting to come alive again for this Dallas team. For those of y'all watching, I think you need to start sharing this. 
Those of all who left the party, tell them to come on back in. It's going to be a nice finish here. Cameron Massey driving to the basket. Oh, Cam. Ties the ball game up. Will you dance for me? Cam Massey. Calvin Williams looking to get this offense going. But these Houston ballers, Cam Massey, looking to stop him at all costs. Houston has had a go. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Nick Lovelace going above and beyond the call of duty to flush it with two hands. Nice pass there by Curtis Hollis. Slamma whamma jamma. Solomon Zaze. Oh, a beautiful oh, pass. Solomon, Solomon Zaze <laughs> letting the coach know I do my thing. Representing D Town by way of. Afghanistan. Solomon Zaze with some D Town boogie in him. That was with a steal. Cameron Massey slowing it down. Great job. Didn't have numbers right there. Besides the pull up, rattles one in and out. That's the thing that we want to see. You got the steal. You slowed it down perfect. Get it to the offense. No well, that was the thing, quick three. you know, I noticed that when he got back into the game, he was starting to, to move the ball a little bit more. You know, some of his teammates, you know, were a little bit vocal to end that, that second half um, about Cam. And he got back into the game, and you saw that he started you know, moving the ball a little bit more, but that's the type of play that we don't really need, but I think he may have noticed that. Carla McSpadden kicking it around to Trey Peterson here. We have a mismatch here. Trey Peterson with the Hezo, able to drive around him, but some great help defense from these Houston ballers. Trey Peterson can't believe it. Cam Massey picking Deshaun Washington up full court. 94 feet. Solomon Zaze with some tight defense on Jordell Ross. Curtis Hollis, he's the guy for this Houston team. When they need a bucket, they get the ball in his hands. Holy and he smash. delivers. Curtis Hollis tells the, quiet, the crowd, please quiet down just a little just bit. Just a little bit. Please, just, just calm down a second. <laughs> Hold up, I'm still in the building. My name is still Curtis Hollis. Carla McSpadden kicks it around to clear Walker. Great shot attempt. Oh, Shannon Handy just couldn't reel it in. Folks, with eight minutes left to go in this fourth quarter. You know, A.B., I thought that this, uh... Let's watch this slam two-handed jam here from Nick Lovelace. You know, I thought the Chicago crowd may have been the most live crowd that we've had, but this Dallas crowd is really trying to give them a run for their money. Yes, this... This Dallas crowd is on the neck of that Chicago crowd. And Solomon Zaze, Dallas native, is showing us that he's got some sauce in his tank. And looking for Cameron Massey to kick that one out. Dallas team not happy with that shot selection. Jeremiah Allen was, though, as he <laughs> deflected it out of bounds. Good hands there by Curtis Hollis. Carla McSpadden trying to draw contact and does it. Curtis Hollis does not agree with that foul call at all. Curtis Hollis is, is, is highly upset right now. That's the fifth foul on Curtis Hollis. For those who watched the last ball game, he fouled out late in that ball game. Had picked up his fifth as well, and that's when Chicago made that run as well. Carla McSpadden sinks the first one. Sinks the first one, cutting into this lead. Guys, if you're tuning in, let us know again where are you watching this fourth quarter action from. We'll do our best in this exciting, entertaining game to shout you out. And also, again, invite somebody else into the party. It's a party, it's a party, it's a party. Sean Washington pulling up for three. Ooh, ice Splash. in his veins. 
Sean Washington, Washington, San Bernardino, California, stand up. Seeing Solomon Zaze try to take a risky maneuver there and deflect the pass. Solomon Zaze answers on the other end. Solomon Zaze from Afghanistan distance. Shooting long range bombs. Sean Washington says, I could do it again. Decides not to. Curtis Hollis. I think they, they got defensive three seconds there on Carla McSpadden. Curtis Hollis going to the line to take these free throws, looking to extend this lead. We got seven minutes left here in the fourth quarter. Live, Curtis Caldwell Center, Dallas, Texas. Inaugural season of this historic Junior Basketball Association. Carla McSpadden, man, was on the weak side. Stayed in the lane just a little too long on that play. Sean Washington, tight defense from Cameron Massey. Big Scott Norris with the rebound, kicks it up to Cameron Massey. Cameron Massey finds Solomon Zaze. Oh, I think he got away with no the goal easy 10. baskets. Curtis Hollis with the block. Curtis Hollis coming to the other end, pulls up from three. Off the back iron, Shannon Handy with another board. Oh! Block and foul. Called on Cameron Massey. I don't know about that one, A.B. The crowd doesn't know about it either. A lot of moves. Let's see this block Solomon on here. Zaze. Oh! That's a clean block, that folks. Was. I thought it just may have gotten off the glass first. Curtis Hollis, a player who does it all for this Houston team. Offensive, decent, defensively. You know that he leads him in the locker room. Shows up right there with the clutch block. Haven't seen a block that clutch since LeBron on Andre Iguodala in the finals. It definitely was a clutch block, for sure. Curtis Hollis pulls up from mid-range. Dallas's ball. For those of y'all watching at home, I'm not sure if you can hear the energy in this arena, but it is definitely lively in here. It's Lydia again. It's Lydia again in <laughs> Dallas. <laughs> Dallas Arena. Cameron Massey with a drive. Tries to kick it, but it's a turnover. A oh. Very scary fall. Curtis Hollis there. They're going to give him the basket on that for the goal 10. Check that out again. Coach Ray Johnson is going to have a decision to make here. I mean, Cameron Massey is playing some really tough defense, but he's struggling a little bit on the offensive side as we see him come to the bench. We have someone watching from Bakersfield, Polo Kerr. Shout out. I call him McSpadden running the show again for this Dallas squad. See him already calling the play, looking to get into the offense. Finds Khalil Walker on the outside, drives. Khalil Walker Ooh. creates some space. <laughs> Khalil Walker. Khalil Walker with a very strong finish in front of the basket. Sean Washington looking to get a strong finish of his own. And that's that's what you talked about right there. You take Cam Massey out of the game and you lose that on-ball defender. Ooh. Nate Morris trying to get it going underneath the basket there. Unable to finish. Turnover here. Luis Silva checking in for these Dallas ballers. Pulling out Solomon Zaze. You see, here we go again. Bringing in Luis Silva right now for what he can pro provide for you on the defensive end. The energy he's going to get his hands very active. Hopefully, you get a loose ball and get him out in transition. We got Derek Jr. coming in. Uh, shout, uh, shout out to Derek Jr. He's from Fort Myers, Florida. Saginaw, Michigan in the building. Peyton Tennant. That's a uh, Allen Dr Draymond, PA. Draymond Green is from Saginaw, I believe. Oh, yeah. Ooh. 
Jordan Ross. Jordan Ross. Playing Again. some silence in the crowd. Playing some strong minutes for this Houston team. New arrival. 30 second timeout. Ray Johnson. Jordell Ross talking to LeVar Ball, letting him know it's his first time here, but he's here to stay. And LeVar loves it over there. Khalil Walker leading this Dallas team with 18 points. Curtis Hollis leading score for the Houston Ballers, 26. Both, both guys shooting decent from the free throw line. We want to see them pick that up a little bit more as they're both guards. But then you see they're doing it all for their teams. Curtis Hollis, 26 points, six rebounds, five assists, three steals, one block. Khalil Walker, five rebounds, five steals, and one block. Two guys are showing up on both ends of the court for both of these teams and are leading the way, folks. With five minutes left in this fourth quarter, let us know who you think is going to be the MVP and also who do you think is going to pull out the W here. Got Solomon Zaze shooting at the crowd, super hype in here. Folks showed up here for Dallas. I'm loving what I'm seeing. Dallas is one of those places for me that it's my first time here, but it feels like home away from home, from home, from home, from home. There was a moment in my life where I was probably doing the Dougie about 80% of the time that I wasn't sleeping. <laughs> so I feel like I'm, I'm from Dallas. I still don't have any footage of you actually doing that. So. Solomon Look Zaze Sol has a, <laughs> Solomon a nice Zaze. section over there. Right, right behind, behind him <laughs> is his big head. <laughs> his twin brother is in the building. Zaze 1 and Zaze 2. Definitely got a ton of support right there in the crowd. I mean, I, I, can I get a big head, though? Can we get an A.B. the Hero big head in the building? If, if you get a big head, that means that you've actually officially made it in life. That's when I know I have arrived. <laughs> Mama made it. Luis Silva from the Bronx. 52 block passes to Carla McSpadden. Carla McSpadden looking to get the offense going. Trey Peterson checking out the shot clock. Nine seconds. He's got Deshaun Washington on him. Carla McSpadden from outside. Unable to knock it down, but we see the hustle from Luis Silva. Good save Able to there get by, a rebound. By Miggy there. Another possession for this Dallas squad. Ah. Forced See, pass there by Luis Silva. Should have threw that up to Nate Morris instead of trying to force that bounce pass there. Definite gamble. We talked about, I talked about this in the first half. This that play at the top of the key where Deshaun Watson dribbles to the strong side. Curtis Hollis, whoever's in that wing, V cuts, back doors, bounce pass for the layup. Just gets fouled in the play. Nate Wallace, Nate Morris, fouls out of the ball game. Stops by the Houston bench. Shake the coach's hands. What sportsmanship, folks. Look at that beard. It's a beautiful beard by Nate Morris. Looking like a true woodsman. Full beard. That's a man's beard. Right there. It's a man's man beard. Kurt Hollis still clutch for this Houston team. Knocking down that first free throw. You know, I used to have the, the Troy back in the day, you know, the Pastor Troy. You didn't have no Pastor Troy back in the day. Oh, the Pastor. You either call it Pastor or Troy, either one. That was one of my goals in life is to have that Pastor Troy beard. And Just go and, all the way down. And, and get it braided or <laughs> let it lock up. I got over that phase very quick, folks. <laughs> Thank God. Khalil Walker going to work on the mismatch, pulling up in Jeremiah Allen's face. 
You notice the adjustment here in the, here in the fourth quarter. You know, Coach Rick Nelson is going with Deshaun uh, Washington. Jordale Ross still hot. He's going with Deshaun Washington to run the point. Jordale Ross, Houston native. First game here in the Junior Basketball Association. Showing why he's on the court. Earning those minutes. Three minutes and 56 seconds left. Houston leading 94-83. Rick, Coach Rick Nelson walking way down here to let him make his presence felt and his voice be heard. Coach Rick Nelson. Texas basketball coaching legend. Houston coaching legend. Oh, beautiful pass. And one finish. I, I believe Coach Louis Silva just threw his pass between the Houston defender's legs. We got to look at this one close, folks. I, I believe it went through his legs. You couldn't see it from that angle. I'm pretty sure he, he nutmegged Nick Lovelace right there. Fan favorites. Solomon Zaze enters the game, hoping to give a spark on the offensive end for this Dallas team. This is the energy lineup right now for this Dallas team. Sean Washington running the point for this Houston team, giving Calvin Williams a break. Khalil Walker. Playing some tight defense. Curtis good help defense by Luis Silva. Dallas team playing some stingy defense, forcing a turnover here. That was excellent defense there by Dallas as a whole. Curtis Hollis tried to drive. Luis Silva stepped over. Khalil Help Walker sees some space, drives in. Khalil Walker with the board off the column. Carla McSpadden miss. Two Omaha, Nebraska native. Went to high school over. together, won a Nebraska State basketball championship. Two guys who play basketball at a high level with some great IQ. Louis Silva with a steal, pushing it with a great pass to Khalil Walker. Oh. Khalil Walker unable to finish, <laughs> but does draw contact. This Dallas team is trying to get in this game, and the crowd here is loving it. Khalil Walker has a chance. Get this game back down to four. Two minutes and 59 seconds left. If you ask somebody in this building right now, how do you feel about this game? I can guarantee you they give you two words. I'm loving it. That's three. <laughs> <laughs> that is three words. The way you say it, it, it all run together. Okay. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Got Brandon Williams here, mathematician. Want to count everything. Well, I did teach math, so. Yeah. Louis Silva with another big board. Unable to finish with that left hand. Oh, tough break there by Dallas. They had an opportunity to get the lead down to three. Curtis Hollis, he's the bucket for this Houston team. Draws a foul here. Interesting substitution about to happen. Calvin Williams is about to come back into the game here with two minutes and 48 seconds left. We saw in the last game, Chicago was able to kind of harass him a little bit with the size, you know, only being 5'9". Let's see if they have any trouble on offensive, offensive end with Calvin running the point. I think you bring Calvin in just to match the quickness of this Dallas lineup. He's a guy talking with Coach Rick Nelson. He really trusts him handling the ball for this Houston team. Curtis Hollis kicks it into Calvin Williams. Luis Silva, tight defense. Curtis Hollis with the ball again, finds Shannon Handy. Beautiful pass. The left hand from Curtis Hollis down low to Shannon Handy who draws contact, makes the bucket, and will go to the free throw line. This Houston team, every time Dallas goes on the run, they get the ball to Curtis Hollis, he makes a play, and extends the lead. 
Harlan McSpadden got caught in the wrong place there. Shannon Handy with 12 points in this ball game. Luis Silva, a lot of energy. A guy who you want to see throttle it up, slow it down, throttle it up, slow it down. Look at that explosion that he has, A.B. He's just a, a fire starter for this Dallas team. And if he can get it going in these last two minutes and 25 seconds, he does have that capability to lead this team in Tyler's ballgame. Sure, he's been able to get to the basket, but hasn't been able to really finish this evening. Luis Silva is a, is a player who I told a story about in that New York tryout. He showed up a little late. Both all the teams had already started running. I seen him come through the door. I seen him get on the team and I seen him attack the basket and finish within like 15 seconds of being on the floor. No warm up necessary. So he's a guy who can microwave it really hot off the bench. Coach Ray Johnson knows that. That's why he has him coming in as a six man. Clutch Deshaun, free throw right there from Luis Silva. Deshaun Washington checks back into the game for Shannon Handy. Just fouled out. Good defense from Luis Silva, who is pestering Calvin Williams. I won't be surprised if we see some sort of a trap here on Calvin at some point. Calvin Williams is up for the task. He's got that look, that unfazed look in his eye. Curtis Hollis, Mr. Let me get this bucket for this Houston squad. Oh. It's a tough call from the ref there. Calls a foul on Carla McSpadden. Looks like he stepped on the foot of Carla McSpadden, which is what caused him to lose balance. But I don't know if there was some contact there. I think Trey Peterson should actually switch that at the top. Folks, we are coming to you live today from the Curtis Caldwell Center. If you're in the Dallas area watching and you're not here, you just took an L. So. Amazing ball game, folks. We've got B. Jones on the ones and twos. Has the building rocking all night with all the, the hits. Shout out B. Jones. Interstate rivalry, Houston versus Dallas. Game has been oh, everything we dreamed of as Curtis Hollis, Mr. Clutch. Rattles one around the rim. Tough Just break right there. Out. Rocka G. Walter, nickname alert. Who is the Rocka G. Walter? Rocka G. Oh, Walter. G. Walker. Okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. I'm feeling it. Trey Peterson getting a the bucket there. Houston leading by four. Luis Silva is pestering Calvin Williams. Curtis Hollis takes a shot, able to get his own rebound. Luis Silva continuing. The defensive pressure on Calvin Williams. They got that ball to Curtis Hollis again, who another, is a bucket. Another breakdown on the defensive end by the Dallas Ballers. But gotta get a stop. Curtis Hollis is just Mr. Basketball. Luis Silva looking to take advantage of the one-on-one -on -one defense from Calvin Williams. Able to get to the basket and draw contact. He's been clutch right now from the free throw line. Unable to finish as he's got to the basket, but he's going to try to knock down both of these free throws to cut into this Houston lead with one minute and 16 seconds left in the ball game. Have the Houston Ballers leading 99, Dallas Ballers 93. Folks, let us know. Who you think is going to win this ball game? We still for misses the first, the front end of this uh, two shot foul. Miggy 
Second attempt. Rattles Sinks it. In. It. Houston team has to get the ball out of Calvin Williams' hands to bring it up from Curtis Hollis. From the pestering defense of Louis Silva. Khalil Walker up to the task, guarding Curtis Hollis. Unable to stay in front of him, but tips it out. Quick hands from Khalil Walker. The Rocker, G. Walter. Khalil Walker. G. Walker. <laughs> Walker. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to get it, folks. Oh. Seems like folks are tuning in live. Would like to see Kawhi Leonard play in the JBA. Folks, put a call in. Tell him we got a spot for him. Well, he just doesn't make the age requirement, unfortunately. Hey, if he's a ball, I'm sure we can figure something out. Timothy Barrow says, give him his shout out for that nickname, A.B. Rocker Jim Walker. Looks like Khalil Walker is checking out of the game with his sixth foul. Octavius Smothers checking in. He's a guy who can get it going quick. The game is not over, folks. Dallas down by five. 59 seconds left in this fourth quarter. Nick Lovelace at the free throw line. Misses the first one. Montavious Smothers in the ball game. If he's open, guys, he can knock it down. Timeout from the Dallas Ballers. Somebody in the comment section has a talented 13-year-old who could average 15 points in his league. Somebody get his contact info when he turns, when he graduates high school. Send him to a tryout. Eight teams in the Junior Basketball Association. Teams all over the country. Folks, this is a historic inaugural season. First game was in Los Angeles. Moved on down to Houston, Texas, up to Seattle. Over to Chicago. Now we're in Dallas, Texas. Heading to New York on Friday. Curtis Hollis leading this Houston team with 31 points. Khalil Walker, who's fouled out already with 26 points to lead this Dallas team. Dallas looking to come back in this ball game. They do not want to die young and die easy this evening. Our next game, June 29th in New York City. Chicago versus Philly, LA versus New York. It's gonna be a great game, folks. We just watched Chicago take down this Houston team on the back of Kizo Brown who dropped 48 in front of his home crowd. A raucous Chicago crowd. We watched Philadelphia make their JBA debut with the onslaught of offense from Devin Hayes. So folks, be prepared for that game to be a high scoring affair in a head to head matchup for the ages. Trey Peterson inbounding to Carlin McSpadden. Omaha, Nebraska native. Zaz Solomon Zaze with a three. Oh, rims that in and out. rims out. That was a beautiful play. They drew that up for him. Unable to knock it down, though. It's exactly what they wanted to see from that Dallas Baller squad. You see the fans in the stands with that Triple B merch. BBB. B. <laughs> BBB. B. Hey. Y'all do it for the gram. We do it for the fans. B. Jones, the producer of that beat, is in the building. Get your merch, get your merch. Get your merch, get your merch. Shout out get to your Demo. Merch, get your merch. Folks, they got them JBA socks on sale right now for $10. Get in the building and get you some. Feel so comfortable on your feet. Martavius Smothers for the Dallas Ballers bringing the ball up to court. 
Picks up his dribble, kicks it to Solomon Mazaze, who whips one across to Trey Peterson. Able to finish. 36.5 seconds on the clock. Looking to fix it in the building. Houston leading 102 to Dallas 94. Jordell Ross inbounds to Curtis Hollis. Luis Silva playing some pester in defense. Almost comes away with a steal. A foul on Curtis Hollis as he drives to the basket. Curtis Hollis at the free throw line, looking to extend this Houston lead. Folks, earlier we talked about Curtis Hollis, Dallas, Arlen, a Dallas native from around this area, Arlington, Texas, an inner struggle that he was feeling. We compared it to that moment in Free Willy when, when the little kid in that movie knew that he had to set Willy free. Martavius Smothers with a three ball. Tay Tay. Louis Silva, Z Solomon Zaze, Carla McSpadden. Oh, oh, rims out, Louis Silva. Ball out on Houston. Dallas retains possession. Folks, this Dallas team will not die young. They're going to go until zero, 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 zero hits the clock. We said it earlier, Martavius Smothers, if he is open, he has the ability to knock it down from the outside. Got a timeout right now. Both of these coaches looking up to draw a place. I would tell you right now, you do not want to give Coach Rick Nelson the opportunity to draw up a play. In that game versus Chicago, this Houston team was down by two with less than five seconds on the clock. Coach Rick Nelson calls up a play, beautifully executed. Jordan Myers knocks down the buzzer beater to send that game into overtime. And Coach Rick Nelson turns over to the bench and lets us know he's a bad boy when it comes to drawing up them plays and coaching this squad. He used a, a, a different way of saying it, but he definitely made it you know, very clear that he knows exactly what he's doing. Some colloquialisms <laughs> of his own. <laughs> but he got his point across. He's a bad boy at calling up some plays. His Dallas team looking to get a bucket here. Harlem McSpadden the inbound. Luis Silva. Rick Nelson asking for a timeout right now. Similar to what A.B. was talking about, this time on the defensive end, Rick Nelson called timeout. Rick Nelson called timeout to draw that same play up. He saw how Chicago was lining up. He went with a different play, it seems. Now he's seeing how this Dallas team is lining up on offense to figure out how he wants to attack them defensively. So let's see if it works out and pays off this time. All right, folks, stick with us after this ball game. We will be talking with the key player from the winning squad and also that coach. Stick with us. Let us know who do you think is the MVP of tonight's ball game and who do you think is going to pull this out with 25 seconds left in the game. We have the Houston Ballers leading. 104 to 99. 104 to 99. Coach Ray Johnson, California basketball coaching legend, calling up some plays. We got 12 seconds left in this ball game. Houston 104, Dallas 99. Solomon Zaze is a shooter. Martavius' mother, he gets to play. He pulls up. Oh! Tate Tate Smother with the three ball. He's got two. This Dallas defense is playing tight. Oh, foul on Curtis Hollis. Tavius Smothers with the play, drew up for him, hits it in the corner. <laughs> He's hyped right now. Alexandria Louisiana stand up. <laughs> Pop 
pop your collar, young man. Louisiana, Tay Tay Smothers, Trill ENT in the building. This is a huge free throws. I don't know if you can hear this Dallas audience. This Dallas crowd is, is hyped right now. Two-point ball Tavia game. Smothers is <laughs> the Solomon Zaze big head loves it. This they Dallas have to crowd secure this it. rebound. If it's a miss, they have to secure this rebound. Three-point game. Kicks it up to Louis Silva, pushes it up. Four seconds left. Oh, oh Louis Silva with the unenforced error. Curtis Hollis. Curtis Hollis tells the crowd he's wearing Houston on his chest, but this is his city. What, what a, a ball, ball game. game. 105 to 102. The Houston Ballers leave Dallas with a victory. Oh, man. Folks, we build this as an interstate rivalry that will be one for the ages. And if you were in the building tonight, folks, you got your money's worth. If you were in the area and you weren't here, you took an L and you took a big L. The crowd was lit. These players tonight were super lit. And it's just like we keep saying, when you got some guys on the court who are going to ball and do their thing and they dogs at heart, you're going to have a great ball game. The product is amazing this evening, folks. Houston wins this game, 105. Dallas, 102. Houston with 70 rebounds. And if you look at the rebound margin, Dallas, who crept back in there with 58. They were, the margin was up to 30 at one point, folks. So you can see how tight this game got. We watched that Dallas offense slow down. This is the best Dallas team that we've seen. Folks, we got an interview right now with Curtis Hollis and Brandon Williams. Let's check them out. Houston Ballers, Curtis Hollis. Curtis, tell me how does it feel to, to get that exciting win right there? Man, uh, it feels amazing. You know, we, we played horrible, but, uh, you know, we still came up with the win, which is all that matters, man. It was great. Now, you play for the Houston Ballers, but you are from this Dallas area. What does it feel like to be playing in front of this home home uh, crowd right here? It's an amazing environment, man. Uh, as you can see, they, take, they, they come and put on for their city, man. Uh, I haven't played out here in a while, man, so it was good to see everybody out here to see my new and improved game, so it was great. And lastly, what do you want the fans that are watching to know about this Houston team? Man, uh, the last two games we haven't played our best to our fullest of capability, but just keep sticking with us, man. We have a really talented team, and we're going to really put it together, man, so just keep sticking with us, and we'll, we'll keep pulling out these wins. Congratulations on the victory. Man, thank you. I appreciate it. No problem. We'll be back. We'll look some highlights from Curtis Hollis. We are here with the winning coach of the Houston Ballers, Coach Rick Nelson. How does that win feel? Always feels good to get a win, man. Anytime you can come out and get guys and corral them in so they can play all as one unit and figure out to, figure out a way to win, it's always good. Now, I ask the same question to Curtis. You look at this crowd in here. What does it feel like to, to go against this tough Dallas crowd and come out here with the victory? feels good, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we, 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 we feel like we're at home, too. So we're, we're, we're from Texas. We're, we're four or five hours away, so we feel like we're at home. So so we felt like they were rooting for us, too. So whether they were rooting against us or for us, it felt good because we, we're used to the crowd cheering, and we got excited, and I'm glad the guys got up for it and, and played very hard and came out with the win. Now, also, Curtis Hollis, big game tonight. What does he mean to this Houston Ballers team? It means a lot to us. You know, everybody, everybody's starting to buy in. It's still, we still got a long ways to go. Everybody's starting to understand what they do and what they do well. Um, but, but Curtis is a big part of what we do. I think he's got a lot of experience, a lot of things he can teach out a lot of our young guys and a lot of our guys that don't have as much of the experience as he do. He brings a lot of experience and stuff, like tangible things that you really can't teach that these younger guys are going to be able to pick up. So he's a very, very important piece to what we have. Congratulations on the victory, Coach. 
We'll take a look at now. Take a look at these highlights.